We are in the shop and we've got the rear end ready to start working on. So um, what we've done is we've jacked up the car and moved it forward a little bit so that we could unbolt the rear end. Um, it was just kind of haphazardly bolted in so that the car could roll back and forth. Now uh, we've got it out from underneath and uh, I, I wasn't able to get video of this, but I've already done some work. Um, there's a lot of different rear ends that you can use for Derby. Obviously you can use whatever's under your car, but uh, I would say the most popular ones um, are probably the Ford nine inch, which this used to have under it. I removed it and sold it to somebody who's a, a more of a Ford nine inch rear end enthusiast. Um, you got your GM 10 bolts, you got your GM 12 bolts. Those are five lug rear ends. Uh, you have, once you get up into the eight lugs, you got your Dana 60, you have your uh, GM corporate 14 bolt. Um, those are very popular. Um, all of those that I mentioned are pretty popular. Um, you have went on the Chrysler side, you got the, the Chrysler uh, eight and a half or eight and a quarter, I guess it is, I don't know. Um, I don't do Chrysler stuff, but um, this is the crud builder. Um, we, we don't do what's popular here. We do what's available and we do what's cheap, more importantly. Uh, so this rear end is a Sterling 10.25, uh, which I don't know if Derby guys uh, use these. I've never heard of any of my friends uh, or colleagues in the Derby world using one of these. But what I love the most about this rear end is that it cost me 50 bucks. Uh, thanks, Jake. Um, so whether it's good for Derby or not, I don't know. It's already geared for 10, so that's good. I don't have to change the gears out or mess with the gears. Um, so it's Sterling 10.25, and it's going to be the rear end for this Lincoln Continental build. Uh, and... Um, Let's look at it a little bit. I've already done some bracing to it. <coughs> um, I braced the axles, uh, shafts with these pieces of square tubing. Um, now on the 10.25, the diff covers on the back, the Ford nine inch, one of the reasons why the Ford nine inch is so popular is because it's got the, the carrier and, and you can pull it out from the front and this is all just solid and you can brace the whole thing up and over and around and just make it the terminator of rear ends. I've built this little piece. I'm gonna actually beef these up a little bit. Um, but this little piece, when we're all done, um, needs to be fitted a little better, but this little piece will go over and this these will be gusseted a little more and then these will bolt down and so I'll have something across here that will protect the diff cover. What we're doing today is a couple things. We are going to, you can kind of see under here, I hope. These are the old mountings for the trailing arms on the side. They do not fit the trailing arms for this car. And uh, you know, I'm amazed that I was actually able to get some long bolts through there so that the car could roll. But this is not gonna be the setup that we stay with. Um, so we're gonna cut those off. We're gonna build new ones so that they fit up to these trailing arms that you see. Uh, under the car. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is underneath the car, it's hard to see, there is one upper trailing arm. Um, because of the rubber um, bushings, it, it doesn't fit between this mounting that I made, so I'm actually going to burn the rubber bushings out and we're going to do something a little different so that this mounts up. Um, and then the most important thing that we're going to do today is what everybody should do to their rear end um, when they're doing a, a derby or even like an off-road application uh, is we are going to weld up the spider gears inside the differential um, this is a limited slip so you know when you're going around a turn <clears throat> it's going to allow the outside wheel to spin faster than the inside wheel that's what gives you a really smooth turn um, you don't want that when you're out on a sandy or muddy derby track you want 
your power both wheels all the time because what happens with a limited slip if it's not welded um, or if you don't have a, a locker or if you don't have a spool or something is one wheel is just going to get stuck the other one's just going to spin and spin and spin and the one that's stuck is not going to spin at all and you're, you're just going to get stuck and your heat's going to be done so that is the main thing that we're doing today um, and so I'm going to get this diff cover off and uh, see what we have in there so with the diff cover off, here's what it looks like. Um, there's a million videos on YouTube on how to weld spider gears. These are spider gears in here. Um, you know, so I, I do not proclaim to be an expert on it. Um, I'll just give you kind of the, the lowdown here real quick and then I'm going to clean it up and then I'm just going to do it and I'll show you the aftermath when I'm done. But basically you want to weld this spider gear to this one, this one to this one, um, these down here, all four here. And then even what I do, it's going to take a lot of punishment. So then I'll even weld these spider, these spiders to the carrier, uh, as well. Now, um, the, the risk here is you don't want to get anything in your ring gear. Um, you get a big piece of spatter or something stuck in your ring gear as you're going. That's just going to mess everything up and you can grenade this, this whole setup. So when it comes time, I'll probably take a big thick rag and I'll just block up this whole, this whole ring gear here. And then what I like to do at the end, um, is I will go through the ring gear, you know, and uh, make sure there's none. I'll go through the entire carrier with a magnet, make sure I get all the spatter out, and I'll do that probably 20 times until I feel like every single little piece is out of there. But um, I gotta clean this out, and to do that, I'll use some brake cleaner. Um, Another tip for you new guys, I, and just make sure that uh, you use uh, non-chlorinated, see there, non-chlorinated brake cleaner, um, especially because you're going to be welding on this after. The reason for that is, I, I don't know, I'm not a chemist, but um, when you weld on uh, stuff with a chlorinated brake cleaner, I guess it creates a, it creates a, a gas that can, chlorine gas that can just kill you, um, kill you instantly like that VX gas from that Nick Cage movie, The Rock. I don't know, probably not that fast, but. It's not good, okay? So just um, use non-chlorinated. Most of the stuff you can find just about everywhere is non-chlorinated nowadays. I, I don't know. Just read a label, all right? Okay, while well, we have, we've been able to rotate it a few times, get plenty of brake cleaner in there. While that's all drying up and evaporating, we are going to take and we're gonna cut these mounts for the trailing arms off either side. So that's what we're gonna do. I got some new trailing arm mountings that I have kind of marked up. I'm going to cut these now. I'm going to make one set and then for the driver's side I'll do something a little bit different because I can use one of the existing mounts. So 
Um, whoop. Not mad. We built a few pieces here. We got them all cut and drilled. I built, these are the two that'll go on the passenger side. And so, grab a bolt here. I just can see this, hopefully. These will go like this. Put some spacers in them or we'll get a shorter bolt obviously for the end product but um when we bring the axle shaft back up here it'll sit right in those grooves and we'll <coughs> we'll tack weld it and then we'll pull it back out again and then we will um <coughs> weld it solid over here i made one piece because this uh the mount for the trailing arms back here was pretty close. So I'm gonna use what's here, and I just built one of these so that instead of it sitting here, it'll sit here, um, which is where we want it. So I'll tack this, tack weld this one in, and then pull this bolt out, and then we will slide this back under there and make sure that it fits and mounts up and then we'll pull it out one final time and do the spiders, so. Okay, we have remounted the rear end and uh, I've even put the wheels on it just to kind of see how it would look. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. The diff cover's still off where uh, we still have some spiders to weld next, but let me just walk you through what I kind of did here. Um, so uh, to center the rear end underneath the car, this pan hard bar was not long enough. Um, I mean, it might have been had I put this mount somewhere else, but I've got this mount here. Um, and so what I did was I just lengthened the pan hard bar um, with a piece of all thread so that I can also adjust it, and maybe reuse it on future cars if it's not too bent up. Um, the, uh, the struts welded these bolts on for the struts and they fit nicely. Um, here's our mounts for the, uh, for the lower trailing arms. These are still just, these are not fully welded. We're going to fully weld these once the rear end is back out, but here's the one for the driver's side. Hopefully you can see the one for the uh, passenger side there. Where we're running into challenges is this upper trailing arm. Again, this mounting that I made has to be rebuilt. I'm gonna cut this side of it off. I'm gonna extend this over, bring a piece down so that this can be fully encapsulated. Um, but springs are up in the seats perfectly. These um, spring seats that I built, will actually a chain will run through these um, and around the spring and so um, keeping the springs from falling out in the middle of the heat but um, it's centered it's got plenty of clearance for the tires and um, I'm pretty pleased with it so um, we're gonna pull this out here's a little close-up of the spider gears um, for you and uh, I know I explained this a little bit earlier in the video but we're gonna weld uh, we're going to weld here, 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 uh, and then I'll also do a little plate that sits in the middle here and weld, and then this carrier is going to completely rotate around, and we're going to do that same exact thing on on the other side, so it'll be from both sides, and uh, then we'll have a nice uh, posse, um, so uh, let's do that. All right, this is what it looks lit up. 
and I got the tires off, so we'll be able to spin this freely. Um, as a time saver, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I'm just gonna do this under the car. Um, I've got a place that I've gotta be later today, and pulling this rear end out, um, welding everything, and then putting it back underneath um, to close out the video would just be way too long, and really, this part is the last part that I want to show you. Um, so, uh, I'm going to attempt the weld cam again. So, um, let me get a little more prepped and uh, we will do this. Okay. Hopefully you can see this. Again, I've got this attached to the mounting on my welding helmet. And hopefully, you can hear me, it's a little muffled. We have cut some little pieces of metal that are gonna plate here. And uh, I have covered up the ring gear. Hopefully we get a ground. Uh, we do have a ground. So um, here we go. And there you go. That's that's nice. Alright. We might have to go to plan B and just weld this thing and clean off the uh, clean off the spatter when we're done. In fact, I think that's what we'll do.
ugly as hell. But now, when ever this axle's turning, it's going to be turning both wheels at the same time, which is what you want. So, uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up video once this is all cleaned up so you guys can see inside of it and everything. Uh, and see how I clean up the ring gear and all that good stuff. But for now, uh, I'm just going to call it a day. So, we'll see you on the next one.